Susan, the trouble in Bosnia has hit home. A former Bellevue resident was among a crew of five who died in a crash of a Navy plane off Italy, returning from a trip near Bosnia. His parents say their son died doing what he loved. Kairos Tim Haig talked with them today. Lieutenant John Messier graduated from Sammamish High School and from the University of Washington. His mother, Alice Messier, says John found his calling in the Navy, flying an E-2 Hawkeye off the deck of an aircraft carrier. He says, you feel that rush? He says, that's what I want to do the rest of my life. I says, you're crazy. He says, well, that's what I want to do, and he did it. John was the sixth of seven children, the youngest son. John's father, Raymond, retired from the Army, but says he doesn't think he influenced his I, son's I, I career path. To, I left it up to each of my children what they wanted to do. Uh, stay out of jail, stay off of welfare, and from then on, uh, do, do what you want. Alice Messier says John was charming and fun-loving, a big kid who didn't want to grow up. Even the kids in the neighborhood used to come and, hey, can John come out and play? And here he is, grown man, you know. Uh, and uh, they just loved him. He still had a little bit of kid left in him. Oh, he, he always will. He told me he yeah. would always be a kid. And I said, aren't you ever going to grow up, John? And he said, oh, no. He says, too much fun being a kid. Alice says she never considered this would happen. Nothing, she says, can prepare you for such a tragedy. The Messiers will meet their children in Norfolk, Virginia this week for a military service. In Bellevue, Tim Hake, Cairo News. A local service is being planned for John Messier in Bellevue probably early next week. There is tragic news for a Bellevue family this weekend. Alice and Raymond Messier have learned their son John was one of five U.S. Navy crewmen who died in a plane crash in Europe. Messier and his crew were monitoring relief supply drops into Bosnia-Herzegovina. Kamos John Sharifi tells us John Messier was a University of Washington graduate who had achieved his lifelong dream to become a Navy pilot. He's a happy-go-lucky uh, uh, guy and uh, very much an individual, not influenced by a lot of other people. He did what he wanted to do. What John Messier wanted to do most was fly. It was his passion, his dream. He said, this is what, he, what I want to do for the rest of my life. John Messier's last flight was on Friday. His radar plane, the E-2C Hawkeye, pictured here, was returning to the aircraft carrier USS Theodore Roosevelt when it crashed off the coast of Italy. The crew had been monitoring the nightly C-130 airdrops of relief supplies into Bosnia. John's mother questions the U.S. government's decision to send troops there. I wonder how easy it is for our government to send these boys all over the world. Some of them to die, some of them to be maimed because we have to be the policemen of the world? Why? Why is that? Why do we have to do all this? We have so much at home here that we have to take care of first. John's parents live in Bellevue. In fact, John grew up here, but recently he was stationed in Norfolk, Virginia, where he lived with his wife. As a youngster, as a teenager, he used to make me modern hell at times, but we <laughs> got over that somehow. In fact, father and son became very close. I don't know, how do you say? I'm going to miss them, that's all, everything. What they'll miss most is John's phone calls. And he'd always say, I love you, Mama. I love you, Mama. That's what he would say. Always. Start and end the conversation? Yes, way. yep. Mm -hmm. You're my Mama. I love you, Mama, he'd say. Yeah. He was a good kid. Real good kid. John Sharifi, Como News 4. John was 30 years old. He is survived by his wife, parents, and six brothers and sisters. Investigators aren't sure yet what caused that crash. A Bellevue family is mourning the death of their son tonight, a son who died when his Navy plane crashed off the coast of Italy. 30-year-old John Messier graduated from Sammamish High School and from the University of Washington. John and four other crew members died Friday when their turboprop plane crashed after monitoring airdrops into Bosnia. Tonight, his mother says flying an E-2 Hawkeye radar plane was a dream come true for her son. Says you feel that rush? He says, that's what I want to do the rest of my life. I says, you're crazy. He says, well, that's what I want to do, and he did it. 
The Messier family says they will hold funeral services at their son's home base at Norfolk, Virginia this week. Susan? understand it right your son now he didn't uh, he didn't decide right away out of high school like a lot of youngsters do to go into the military he sort of uh, he had other things to do and then he made that decision how did you feel about his decision to go into the, the military the Navy? Uh, the Navy? <coughs> yes he uh, he went in the Navy it, uh, I, I, I left it up to uh, I left it up to each of my children what they wanted to do uh, stay out of jail stay off of welfare and from then on, uh, do do what you want. Uh, it didn't particularly elate me, or it didn't bother me. It, it was something that John wanted to do. It's honorable work, so I let it go with that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, when John when John went down, he was on a, a humanitarian mission. Does that do you feel good about that? I mean, there's lots of reasons to be out flying. He could have been mm -hmm. in the Gulf War, for example. Uh, dropping bomb, but I guess maybe that's not his mission, but in other words, no. he could have been in the middle of a conflict. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was in a humanitarian mission. Did you feel good about that or, or something else? Uh, not, not particularly. It's part, part of the job. Uh, like John was in uh, uh, Desert Storm. Uh, I suppose you would consider these combat missions, although an E-2 doesn't get intimately involved in shooting. But he flew 48 missions in, in Desert Storm, and immediately after the war, he was uh, his ship was sent to the Mediterranean where they uh, brought relief supplies to the Kurds. So just overnight, he switched from war to, to a humanitarian, and now he was in, in humanitarian work again. Uh, I didn't particularly look at the humanitarian aspect of it, uh, aviation is risky, and whatever, whatever the role, whatever, whether it's humanitarian or war, there's a risk involved. Mm -hmm. So that, that's all that was in my, in my mind. I'm going to switch over to you. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your son a as a person, the kind of uh, young man he was. You know, everybody has their own personalities. Uh, he was a charmer. Yeah. Uh, he loved life. He was very happy. He laughed a lot. Liked to party. He was at the U. He was at fraternity Phi Kappa Tau. He made a lot of good friends there. Very good friends who have been calling during this time. And uh, one young friend who was also a naval officer, uh, Barry, said last night, uh, I've saved every letter that John has ever written me and I'm going over them. And he was just crying on the phone. It was just, it's remarkable. He, he, he was a good friend to his friends and they to him. And uh, he liked to party, he liked to go out, and he, was, he loved children. He didn't have the opportunity to have children yet, but he loved them, and he has many nieces and nephews who are all bereaved over this, and uh, I, don't, I don't know what to say. Even the kids in the neighborhood used to come and, hey, can John come out and play? And here he is, grown man, you know. Uh, and uh, they just love him. He still had a little bit of kid left in him. Oh, oh he, he always will. He told me he yep. would always be a kid. <coughs> I said, aren't you ever going to grow up, John? And he said, oh, no. He says, it's too much fun being a kid. So he was doing mm -hmm. what he loved to do. Did he ever talk about being a pilot when he was a youngster? Uh, later on, uh, you know, in, in, not, in, not real young, but... Uh, in his high school years. In his high school and on up, he talked about it. And we thought, oh, it's a fantasy. But it was a dream, and he followed it. That's the way I see it. It's, it's difficult to communicate when you're so far apart. When was the last chance you had to actually communicate with him? I mean, either by, I guess, by telephone. Yeah, we, we did by telephone uh, yeah, we, recently. Yeah, we talk quite quite frequently on the uh, on the phone. Actually, we haven't seen him in uh, since October. Uh, what was October? When we went back east for my father's oh, funeral. Oh yes, yes. 
he, my father died yeah, no. in Connecticut, and he, he and his but wife went up there. Other, uh, but barely a week went by when we didn't talk on the phone. Mm -hmm. Was he happy doing what he was doing? Seems just, yes, to put it in a word, yes. And he'd, uh, especially um, since he started carrier landings. He, his uh, first first landing, he called us from uh, from Florida. That uh, gee, this this is what I want to do with the rest of my life. I said, I said, are you crazy? I said, you, he says, the minute I got catapulted off of that carrier, he says, and you feel that rush, he says, that's what I want to do the rest mm -hmm. of my life. I said, you're crazy. Mm -hmm. He said, well, that's what I want to do, and he did it. And he's he's done hundreds of them. Yeah, he was very experienced. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to prepare you for something like this, is there? No. no. You, you mentioned your father dying, but you just, you know, I mean, yeah. you, you knew he was in the military. Mm -hmm. You knew he was uh -huh. a pilot, which is a dangerous job, but uh -huh. you, you can't prepare yourself for this. I never thought of this. Never, mm -hmm. never. I knew he was capable. I knew he loved what he was doing, and he was careful, and I never, ever thought this would happen. Did you know he was down uh, off the coast of Peru when they were drug running recently down there? Do you remember that episode? Well, well, the Navy was the helping Navy out was in, helping the, out in the anti-drug uh, drives, anti searching for, for the uh, drug runners. There was a, a plane was that went down there, too, at that time. Oh. And he was flying, if I understand it right, he's flying a, is it a radar yes. aircraft? Yes. Well, it's, it's uh, I, uh, put it as simply as we can, being near Boeing, it's a miniature a AWACS. It, it, it predates the a AWACS, but... Uh, the uh, it's it it performs a similar thing, or, or a similar mission on a on a smaller scale. Mm -hmm. um, it it doesn't service all the services like like the AWACS does strictly the Navy, but they work uh, they work together. Mm -hmm. uh, it uh, uh, like we showed you the photo the the radar dome on the top and all that stuff. It's it's got all kind of electronics and a thing. Yeah, that's a familiar sight to people around here. I know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, this this of course is smaller than that. That's basically a 707, and this is a uh, this is a Grumman air, aircraft. But uh, they do basically the same thing. Yeah. I'm gonna stop it right there. Okay. Um, great. My, my, dad, my dad got in the military right after World War II. He served in uh, the South Pacific a little bit. He was teaching. He came here to teach uh, late 40s, right around 1950. He opened up Newport High School. When they opened First taught at Belgrade and was in Newport where he taught at the same age as you folks. So he's been here, he's been in Belgrade since uh, 19, I guess since about 1950. Well, we, we came here in 73. So, but, uh, I've seen him well. it, It's amazing. Isn't it? Because yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I just moved away after when I went to school for a few years and came back to live here. And you almost feel lost. You don't know your way around. You know the streets, but you certainly don't know the landmarks anymore. Well, you react with it. I think one yeah. of the biggest traffic bottlenecks in the area is the Factoria, where the one, 128. Right. And we moved here, the 7-Eleven and that little bank across, across the street were the only, yeah. the only buildings there. Yeah, when well, Newport High School opened, that's right. And there was, of course, nothing there. And all the apartments, the condominiums, and the shopping centers, and the car dealers.
uh, our youngest, Carol, went over there. Uh, it wasn't really cool, so. John went to Olga. This is my kindergarten right there. <laughs> I'm pretty familiar with the neighborhood. I live in Kirkland now, but uh, this is where I grew up. Well, what, you know, we were involved in another thing back uh, several months ago, and we were interviewed by um, Dave. Uh, Dave Ross. Ross, and he told us that he used to live in Stable. Yeah, yeah, Lake Hills. I don't know where it's yeah. he did. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe I'll graduate to Suspect to Spade. And he's, he's pretty rough on some of yeah, the people. I think a good interviewer is somebody who sort of picks and chooses his moments. Uh, well, he does. Yeah. Some people you have to go after, and other people, you know, like yourself, you certainly want, wouldn't want to uh, uh, debate uh, an issue like that. Yeah, he does a good. I think the interest, the, the interviews are most interesting when you're when you're really going after somebody who doesn't quite ring true. Maybe there's something, no. something there you're not hearing or he's not saying, mm -hmm. and then you go after him. Uh, I need to ask you a question. Yeah. What made you decide to come? I don't, actually, I, it wasn't my decision. I think the, the made the decision to be assigned to desk. How did it come about? I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, I wasn't in on that. They wanted me to come to do the interview. I'm happy to do it. Well, I'm not really sure what, what goes into it. Is it because thing. the names were published? Were the, the names were published? That's how they knew of That's you. That's how they knew. That's how they knew of you. But as for why to do the interview, I think just to, to uh, well, you mentioned also about uh, letting people know that might have known him. And that's, that's one good reason. No, that's we are going to be uh, having a service, a local service for him when we come back. Mm -hmm. and I Uh, there's, uh, no, there's no basketball game tonight. We have a, a five and a six o'clock game tonight. Five and a six o'clock. I don't know where at this point. What time are you at this point? It'll are you going to be around? Yeah, we will be here at that time. We're not leaving until the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll call all our friends to video it, okay? Yeah, you Somebody will back. have it, all right? Thank you. 